Creative Coders, today we're going to learn how to add inspiring images to your app. And by the end of the video, your app will flip between two of your own images when the button is pressed. We'll also riz up the image by rounding the corners and adding a shadow. You know what time it is. It's time to learn big. If you're new here, welcome. You might want to check out the course playlist to see how we got here. So far, all the images we've been using are from Apple System Images. But now we're going to add our own images to the You Are Awesome app. So you're going to need your own images. You can use images of PNG, JPEG, HEIC. Check Apple's documentation if you want to use another image format, but those three should cover most of the still images that you'd have on your camera or that you'd find on the web. To follow along with our lesson, just make sure that you name your images image zero through image nine, all in lowercase. And if you don't want to use your own images right now, each app in this series has a set of files that you're welcome to use. You can find these files at bit.ly slash prof-g-swiftui-files, all lowercase. And if you go into the folder named You Are Awesome Files, then click on the Images folder, you'll see a bunch of properly named images that I've created. Now I'm showing the images in list view, but you can click on the squares in the upper right to see them in thumbnail view. I love adventure travel, so these are just images I've taken while traveling, and I've modified them with goofy, some might say corny, inspiration phrases. I'm going to go back to list view, then I'm going to click on the top image, hold down the shift key, click the last image, and right click and select download. My browser asked me where I want to save the file, I'll save it to the desktop. Yours are probably downloading to your downloads folder. Safari will unzip the folder with a weird name. Chrome might just leave it as a zip file, so you might have to double click to unzip. But if I look inside here, I can see all 10 images that I downloaded. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold down the shift key, and click the last one. So they're all highlighted. Then I'll head back to Xcode, and we'll open up the Project Navigator, and we're going to click on this area that says Assets. This is called the Assets Catalog. It's an area of your Xcode project where you can store certain types of files that you're going to be using in your app. Those can include images, sounds, colors. We'll drag them right into the center column here that says Accent Color and App Icon. In a later lesson, we'll add an icon for our app. Let's head over to the Finder. And I'm going to click and drag these files. I'm going to plop them right in this column in the Assets Catalog, just underneath where it says App Icon, and I can see all my images are in here. Now we also see that there are spaces for three images in there, 1x, 2x, 3x. It's possible to create several images, some images that are two and three times larger than a given image, and those will display at a higher resolution if you have an iPhone that has a Retina or Super Retina display. All you need to do to take advantage of this is to give all three images the same name. But for the image that's twice as large, add an at 2x just in front of the dot extension. And for images that are three times as large, add an at 3x. Now, as a developer, know that the point size that you give your apps when you write your code, sizes for things like frames or shapes, is independent of the density or the resolution of the device. So if you write an app that will display an image in a 300 by 200 space, that's going to be the point size. But if you have a higher resolution device and you have images of larger sizes, iOS will try to squeeze the larger image into the same frame size so that that image looks nicer. Now, even though I don't have 2x or 3x images here, those are still going to show up fine on devices that have a high resolution display. So now that I've copied the images into my app, I can return to the Finder and throw the folder with the downloaded images into the trash. And now let's head back to Xcode and open up the content view and get our images to display in our app. So let's add our image as the first item in our VStack just before the spacer. And we set it up almost the same way we set up system images in the earlier lesson. Now all my modifiers are going to work the same with the custom images, but I'm going to delete the image with the system name in here, and we're going to type over capital I image. But in code completion, instead of making the selection for system image with the system name label, instead select the one that just says name, this one right here. And remember the underscore means that there won't be a label in front of the parameter that we pass in. So press return to accept this, and then in between the parentheses, we just enter the string, which is the same name as a file that's in our asset catalog, and we don't put the extension at the end. So to use image zero, we'll just put in between the double quotes, lowercase i, image zero, no space in there, and hello, friendly ostrich. Now, since this is a full color image, we don't leave this foreground style of orange in here anymore, so I'll highlight and delete that. And now let's modify our image so that it has rounded corners. Now the old modifier that used to be used for this was dot corner radius, but as you can see in here, that's been deprecated. Instead, it says use clip shape. So let me show you how you use that. We'll select dot clip shape, and you can see code completion says that this sets the clipping shape for the view. And what this will do is it will clip or cut off the image according to the outline of whatever shape we enter as its shape parameter. And for the shape in here, we're gonna enter the shape that we wanna use, and we wanna use a rounded rectangle. Now there are a bunch of different options in here. You wanna select the option with corner radius. 
Think of the radius as determining how large the arc in the corner will be. The larger the number, the larger the curve of the corner arcs. So to give you an idea how this would work, if I had a square that was 200 by 200 points and a radius of 100 points, the square would actually be clipped to a circle. Now this one here shows a rounded rect with a 50 radius and the same 200 by 200 square. And this one down here has a 15 radius. So I'm going to select the rounded rect and give it a corner radius of 30. Now the image on this pro iPhone is over 400 points wide. We're not going to get a circle but we will get a nice curve in the end. If you don't like 30, feel free to experiment with different values to get a better sense of how radius works. So this looks good, but what I think would look really great is if we add a shadow to it. That'll give it a sort of 3D effect that makes it seem as if our image is floating above our app. Now we can add that with the dot shadow modifier, and shadow has a lot of optional parameters, but we only want radius, and we'll put a 30 in here as well. And look at that slick swifter, nice subtle shading, a bit of a 3D effect, sweet. And before our challenge, let's clean things up a bit. I have an extra blank line after the spacer. You might not have that, but I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to get rid of the orange tint in our button. I'll just opt for the default, which is blue. And we no longer need the commented out if statement here, so I'll delete those lines. And as for the text view, I want to really declare your awesomeness. So I'm going to change the font weight to dot heavy and the foreground style to dot red. And now let's get at that challenge. Why don't we change the app so that when it starts up, the image is blank, but each time you press the button, it toggles the image between image zero and image one. Now here's a hint. You'll want to store the name of the image in a variable, just like you do with storing the string that displays in the text view inside of a variable named message. So to make it easier for us to compare answers, why don't you name that variable that will store the name of your image as image name? So it should look just like the operating app on the right. We'll restart that so that you can see it again and clicking the button is toggling between image zero and image one. I bet you know how to do it. Pause, give it a shot, and resume, and let's compare answers. So to toggle between image zero and image one, we want to modify our ternary operator for the image string down here. Now we already have an image string declared as a state variable so it can be changed, but we'll replace the string literal in the value image string. And you know what? The challenge said to use a variable named image name. So this is a good time for us to show you how we can quickly rename all of our values in Xcode. So if I right click on image string here, I get the context menu. One of the options under the context menu is refactor, and one of the options under that is rename. So select refactor rename, Xcode collapses and shows us everywhere where image string is mentioned. And I can type over image string with image name, lower camel case. I can see all the changes made every other place where image string used to be. Press return to accept this. Nice, all values changed. Now I can delete the string literal that I have in the image view and replace that with the variable image name. And I'll refresh my screen. Nothing shows when the app starts, which is what I want. Again, image name is initially set to empty string, so that's expected. And then down here in my button action, in the ternary operator for image name, I want my true false condition to check to see if image name equals image zero. So I'll replace the constant image string one with the string literal image zero. I could have changed the constants up here, but instead I'll do it right here because I think it more clearly illustrates our logic. And if image name equals the string image zero, then we want to pass in the string image one. That'll toggle it. Otherwise, if image name does not equal image zero, well then after the colon we want to pass in the string image zero that should be it so I can get rid of the image string constants that I had up here I'm not using those anymore so this is gonna let us toggle between image zero and image one inside the variable image name image name is a state variable it starts out as empty and when it changes we should see the image updated so let's try this out click and we see the friendly ostrich. This is image zero. And that's because when we start image name equals the empty string. So image name, if we evaluate in this condition here is not equal to image zero, it's the empty string. So we skip over the true condition after the question mark and we head to the false condition after the colon and we put image zero into the image name variable. We get our friendly ostrich, click again. This time image name is equal to image zero which is the ostrich. So we set this to image one, since this is true. That's the value after the question mark, which is the dragon. And we can keep clicking on the press me button. That'll toggle us between image zero and image one. Nice work, Swifter. So once again, Swifter, we had some big learning. We learned about the asset catalog. We added custom images to our app. We learned how we could use a variant of the image view, passing in the name of an image in our asset catalog. We learned how to use clip shape with rounded rect to round our corners. We work with radius. We added a shadow for a shadowy floating effect. 
and we renamed variables all at once with refactor rename. I hope you're feeling swift-tacular with all these skills you're gaining. Continue to hack.